This is probably the most exciting object we've ever taken into the collection. There are people alive because of Brava November. Seeing her today, so I'm getting quite emotional. It's like she's got here and she's finally able to rest. It was a pretty great day. Yeah, there was a bit of a happy dance. There was a bit of cheering and fist pumping and these sorts of things as well. She's probably the most famous helicopter that RAS ever had. If it wasn't for Brava November, there'd be you know so many trips stranded on the battlefield that never made it out alive. So um, there are people who owe their lives to Brava November, no doubt. Absolutely. Three, two, one. I'm inside Bravo November, one of the first Chinooks to enter service 40 years ago. Just gonna release mine. She was the only one to survive the Falklands and has served in every conflict since. Four of her pilots have been awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, and today she makes her final journey from RAF Odium in Hampshire to the Royal Air Force Museum. So moving aircraft is quite a complex task, however, we do do it quite a lot. This is my second one in two weeks, and this will be three this week. Next week I'm moving two Apaches and two um, Pumas. <laughs> Some bids are honestly that simple, so we'll just, just quick little bit of bubble wrap and some tape just so to, to prevent it from um, having damage. Other things come in specific boxes, the rotor shafts and things like that, they're, they're very, very delicate. They can spin over or almost 7,000 RPM uh, and, and they're allowed incredibly little amount of damage. Technically, Bravo November isn't being fully retired. Many of her components are still good, and so are being donated to other Chinooks, like an organ donor gifting her parts. We do get people's ways and kind of upset people often. <laughs> Motorists try and cut in between the escort vehicles. People do nuts things just just to get a, a picture of an aeroplane. Museum jobs are generally our favourite. Museum tasks put us in the part of its story so later on we can tell our grandchildren. It was a pretty wet day when she came up, we could have floated her up on the canal or something like that rather than send her by road. Pouring down, freezing cold, couldn't get her through the crash gate through RAF Cosford so we had to take a gate post off uh, but in some ways it was a very fitting welcome, one last adventure for her before she reached her forever home here at the museum. It took several days to rebuild the celebrity Chinook, but soon she was ready to show, first off to some of the people who knew her best. Still stiff. Oh, they're always stiff, so these, this little hat here, you just lift that up and then you slide the door down, but it's always stiff and it still is. Liz McConaughey flew for 17 years on Bravo November, it's on this aircraft she completed her first and last flight yeah. in the RAF. It really does just still smell exactly the same. It sounds really silly, but the ramp of a Chinook to me is the most important, important part of the aircraft. Yes, the cockpit gets you where you need to go and the pilots get you where you need to be, but if it wasn't for this ramp and all the people and the things that come over the ramp, the, the aircraft wouldn't have its stories. As the number one crewman out in Afghanistan, you would obviously move to the other side where you put the ramp down and then you'd look out to see what was happening out in the six o'clock. Either it would be one stretcher coming towards you or four or five stretchers coming towards you, in which case obviously you had to prep the aircraft for what was about to come on board. Um, and you had a bunch of medics who'd be running past you into the dust cloud that you'd built up and the force protection running out as well to do all round protection for the aircraft. So standing on this ramp and, and looking out into the six o'clock, um, yeah, this ramp, is, if, if it could tell stories, it's got a lot of stories to tell. She looks a bit um, a bit stripped out, really, but um, it's nice to see that they haven't tarted her up, so to speak. She literally has still got scratches and marks everywhere, and I would expect no less of this aircraft because it literally has pulled its weight over the years and it has been the absolute workhorse of the fleet. When you're in Bravo November, you do feel like you're in a little flying shield, and actually, you kind of feel slightly invincible when you're in it. Um, because you just know she's going to look after you. And that's what it's like. It's like you know that the aircraft's going to look after you. The aircraft itself is, is just a fantastic aircraft. It, you know, it does what it says on the packet every single time. The, the answer's two Chinooks. Now, what's the question? Bravo November is just a particularly special one. There's little on the cars now to replace it, apart from newer Chinooks. It's powerful, it's strong, it's flexible. It will take damage and it will bring the guys home. Another of today's VIPs is Tom Kinsella. As chief technician of 18 Squadron, he was responsible for keeping the four Chinooks that had been sent to the Falklands flying. 
He had ambitions to be a war correspondent and had taken his Super 8 camera along with him. When not manning the guns, he preferred to stay above deck filming where he says he felt safer. On the 25th of May 1982, disaster struck. The Atlantic conveyor carrying the Chinooks and a host of other aircraft was sunk by an Argentinian missile. Bravo November was the only one to survive as she'd been sent on a tasking. But the sinking of the ship left Tom with no tools and no parts to keep the one remaining Chinook airborne. Everything was on the Atlantic conveyor, including the aircraft logbook. And we had no aircraft publications to refer to. Everything was done from memory. We did 25-hour servicings, and that involved taking oil samples, and normally you, you would use special filter paper. Now, we didn't have that paper, we had nothing, and we didn't have containers to take a sample of the oil. I'd been accumulating toilet paper for the first six days. I was constipated for six days, believe it or not. So I used this toilet paper, and for the container of oil, our cook, he um, took the uh, salt container out of each 10-man ration pack and uh, we would take the oil samples of these. So toilet paper and salt pots. It was all um, DIY. It's, it's quite unique, I think, to, to, to see this level of attachment to, to this machine and, and all the stories that cascade off it. So having her here with us is just is amazing and it's, it's, she's going to be here for decades to come for future generations to enjoy as well. So we've really captured that, we've saved it. Anybody out there who has their own story about work with Bravo November, you know, in the dust of Afghan or, you know, down in the Falklands, in the Balkans or whatever, you know, get in touch with me. I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. It's literally, it's literally what we do. She's reached her forever home and is here for a good rest, but we'll, we'll be working her really hard to carry on sharing those stories with our visitors for years, for decades to come. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.